So hello and welcome to the third episode of Taste My Game Face. Um, we've been on hiatus for a little while and we're coming back hopefully a little bit more structured with a better format and some maybe more interesting things to say about video games rather than just what's going on at E3. Not that that was anything less than interesting. Um, so let me introduce the my uh, fellow hosts. I am, of course, your, your favourite host. This is the Adi Emo. Um, I've got with me um, in the same room, Joe Knight. Yo! Um, and we've got Daniel Slauson, who's been on the last two as well. Hello. And we've got a new presenter this time um, for for your entertainment and delight. We've got Liz Richardson. Hello. Cool. I'm um, a presenter. I like that. Yeah, yeah, you can be a presenter. <laughs> um, but like, you've got your own YouTube channel in here. You, you're like a oh. better yeah, yeah, presenter yeah, than we are. Pro. We're just like, you know... <laughs> Jumping on your back. That exactly, exactly. Like, Thanks. You, we want you to, to promote this on your YouTube channel so we can get your listeners. Fantastic. Well, <laughs> I, I can, actually. You know, when I do another video, I can um, pimp you guys out. <laughs> like that. Yeah, we, yeah. Need, we need a bit of that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Definitely. All right. So, um, should we talk about what games we've been playing then? Before yeah. moving on to the news? Good place to start. Who wants to go first? Who's got, who's got a cracker? Why don't you go Me. first? Ah, okay. Liz, it's all Liz. Uh, sorry. Take, take over. <laughs> Only because it's really fresh, because I finished it today, The um, mm-hmm. Walking Dead Season 2. Uh, you can't talk about that whilst I'm here, though. I'm I, not going to talk about it. it. I haven't played it yet. I know you haven't. <laughs> oh, is the, new, is the new episode out? Yeah, yeah. That's how fucking yes. out of the loop I am, bro. Like, oh, yeah, I've, I've, played it, I've played everything up to where we're at, and, I've said, and it's been stellar. I've been really impressed with Season 2, actually. Especially because they've like lost their lead writer, and have managed to create oh. something that's so good. Yeah, Sorry, guys, I'll be back happened. in two seconds. Oh, okay. Well, we can continue that. Um. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to spoil anything, because obviously you haven't, but um, I think, yeah, th- this second season has been fairly good, mm-hmm. but I feel in general a little bit let down. Not in like a, oh, they've just completely ruined it, but it's just two reasons. It's the main, the actual story, the actual events have just depressed me beyond depression and also i feel like season two hasn't given you as much choice and specifically in the the last episode episode four um it seems like there's just no real decisions anymore and and but there were no was episode, episode, just, was episode four the last episode for this season well there wasn't a next time at the end of it so i think it might have been if not that was a really weird ending or my game just bugged out and didn't show me so Oh, okay. I think it's the last one. Because there was five in yeah, season I'm, one, right? I'm yeah, sure maybe because they did 400 days as well. No, but I... Yeah, 400 days was six. Yeah, no, but but because that was like a weird in-between one, maybe they've got less in this season. Yeah, maybe. But, yeah, hey. yeah, right. but in terms yeah. of um, in terms of like there being less choice, um, I've yeah. I've heard people talking about the other stuff that Telltale's been producing. Um, uh, what's what's the name of the the one that's Fables one? The Wolf Among Us. Yeah, The Wolf Among Us. Wolf yeah. Among and people have been saying similar stuff about that, but then there it was always just the illusion of choice anyway. Like the narrative still no, 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 had yeah. to be the same no, way. I, I agree with that. As, as in a season one of The Walking Dead. There was that illusion of choice because certain characters you did save, you would see them throughout pre- next ep- like following episodes. But eventually, whichever one survived, or even um, I don't I don't want to spoil it, but for example, the character Ben, um, he'd stick around, but eventually, he, if you saved him, he would still come to a demise. Whereas in particularly the last episode, there are certain occasions when you think I can save this person, but then. There's, there's no follow up on that, and they just die anyway. So it's, it's a bit. It there's feels not like even that they're not. Bit of they're, yeah, they're not even. They're not. Yeah, they're not offering you the illusion of your choices meaning anything. It's just, it feels like they're like, oh hey, look, you made this choice, but it doesn't matter anyway because it all sucks, and we're gonna shit on you. That's kind of. What, yeah, I <laughs> kind that, of what it felt that's like that's what the zombie apocalypse is all supposed to be about. No, I can't. <laughs> I, can't <laughs> I agree with that, feel but like it, it stops then. it becoming fun. Does, is is like is it like abrupt when you save them and then they die? Like 
or does it feel like yeah that could happen there's a slight like time like it but it's it's too short so it's not an abrupt death okay. as soon as you've saved them but there's still it's still short enough there's not to, enough time for to it feel to like... hurt that the fact that they've mm-hmm. you know taken away your choice and especially when you fought so so hard to try and get someone to survive and then <laughs> they just die you know, <laughs> great thanks thank you for that right. and then and then they just kick you in wherever your painful parts are even more um see but i kind of like that about the walking dead i found that like season one made me at at times feel like that um but like i mean not being able i mean i in in episode one when you choose between the two characters i picked carly and her death is gonna happen yeah there's no way to get around like her death and, it's cold, though. Uh, yeah, but I think it added yeah. to their narrative and like pulled me through more. So I feel that if there's a way you can do it and it still be emotionally resonant, but I mean, if it's I think like, as long as it as long as it doesn't feel forced, I think it's okay. I think the yeah. character turnover in season two has been a lot higher though. Like Definitely. it's been much less about linking uh. onto characters and much more about like... drifting. Sorry, I think. <laughs> Yeah, no, go um, ahead, go ahead. It feels like... Sorry, no, it just, it, it does feel like um, uh, characters are being in, in, invited to your to your group and then just for the reason to, for the <laughs> death to killed. hurt Clementine. <laughs> yeah. Purely for that, yeah. It's, and it, it's getting a bit... Uh, I'm finding it hard to connect to each of the characters because they die so quickly and before you know it, it's got, they're gone. So. Yeah, no, I get that. Especially, I found the, the, the uh, uh, what is it, the, is it 400 Days? or what? Yeah. Yeah, I found the 400 Days characters have really, like, um, not been implemented very well and those are characters that I was hoping to build a much stronger relationship with than mm-hmm. I have been able to, which is kind of, I don't know, that's kind of hurt the experience for me. Oh man, I've only just bought the game. You're had, telling me that it's not that pro- great. No, I, I, I haven't had any problem with it so far, and I think yeah. the last episode is one of the strongest yet. Oh, I, I just no, I'm not, not the one, not the one that you've just played because I haven't oh, played it yet. Yeah. But the one before that. Yeah, that no, I agree with that. Actually. That was great. That was amazing. Yeah, Michael Madsen being in it has been a brilliant voice acting cost for them. Michael well. Madsen's in it. Yeah, he killed. Oh, it. Nice. He it both. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Oh, okay, no, fair enough. Maybe maybe, maybe me buying it hasn't been so bad. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not. I, I don't <laughs> want it. to say don't play it, but it'll yeah, it'll break your heart and shit on you. And, and you but it's supposed that. to. <laughs> no, but in a way that's like slightly <laughs> less enjoyable shit. than oh, mate. season one. Oh yeah, dude, I've been I've been like I've been like watching those horrendous episodes of Buffy recently, where like her mum like, well, I mean, if anyone hasn't watched Buffy by by now, no, no, spoil that shit. Yeah, bro. I've like, actually like, yeah. <laughs> What you gonna say? You haven't. No, I was gonna say I've actually just started because I, uh, when it was going on, I only watched episodes here and there. Yes, so me too. Me too. Anyway, Netflix, so I've got I'm watching the... them all in order. <laughs> the, the very same. Where you at? The very same. But anyway, like episode four. <laughs> Buffy's mom just died for me, and it was awful, yeah. and everyone was broken, and I was crying, and it was the best thing. It's ever. the best episode I've so, ever done. So yeah, well. I do. I do love it when when <laughs> no. horrible get, things are yeah, happening they're, to they're me. I was crying, and it was the best thing ever. <laughs> That's how yeah. I feel all the time. That was like me at the end all of the time. Bastion. Like yeah, I just I like <laughs> Last of Us. I was crying. It was the best. Thing. Like, <laughs> you know, me feeling. I like when you know video games or art in any way, shape, or form makes me feel shitty. Like I like yeah, connecting no. with that part of myself. Like that part of myself is the part that lets me know that I'm a liar, right? Like it's the thing that goes, <laughs> "Oh, you register that that is shit." So a <laughs> moat. I like. I don't. E- I can't even work out why that's a a particular emotion that I love to feel in entertainment so much. But like it, it really. It's just proving that you feel. It's because it's so. I don't like, even... like that you feel. Things don't make you feel that in real life that often. So when something, thank God, in something in ter- just in any entertainment somehow makes you feel that way, it's powerful. Like it's it's validating in a way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, <laughs> anyway, anyway, we've we've got completely <laughs> off topic. Let's get back to the games <laughs> that we played. Has has anybody got anything else that they'd particularly like to dip into? I know that um, me and Joe spent a good amount of time playing Destiny yesterday. Have you you've yeah, given that? I played a bit of that, well, Dan, right? Yeah. So what, what do you think of it, actually? Well, I was in the alpha, so... Yeah, we, we talked about that on the last podcast, didn't we? quite a lot similar. Mm-hmm. Um, Although they've it's re-recorded... It's got some more story missions. They've, or have they re-recorded Peter Dinklage's voiceover stuff, or have they just... They put cut some the line. 
Oh, I was really disappointed about that. They cut. Was, yeah, they cut the really movie hoping, line. Yeah. What? What? What is it that he that he said that's supposed to be so hilarious? He said he just. It was really badly acted. Like it was as if he was asking a question and he was just like, "That wizard came from the moon." <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, "Yeah, that's fine. We'll go with that the, one." The weird wizard dude in the in the beta has been my favorite thing that I've had to deal with. But yeah, if someone like, he's a wizard, I was like, "Yes, okay, I will shoot him as well as all of the other people." But I love the fact that he is in fact a wizard. It, it would be better if you'd also told me that he was from the moon. Yeah, yeah. it would have been better if he, said, <laughs> he is from the moon. But hey, um, yeah, no, I I quite like the Destiny the Destiny beta, but it mm. kind of it it's kind of a bit loose. Um, it's it's got this good core gameplay and like an, an aesthetic that I really enjoy and uh, a yeah. mix between the fantasy and sci-fi um, that's got this kind of airiness to it that, that quite resonates but there's there's not it doesn't feel like there's enough kind of solid content that there's not enough description of the world like it's just laid out in front of you without you having any solid idea of really what's going on and it seems that that's the kind of thing they've tried to do so that people are that are playing it as a multiplayer game aren't missing out on like large chunks of it but surely you should be catering for people who are playing it single player and then letting the people that aren't fussed miss out on those larger chunks mm. yeah well i'm i am hoping that is something they're going to address in the full release like because yeah. obviously that the, well it sounds like there's going to be a lot more places to go and a lot more things to see and a lot more background to everything but having played this i am i'm nervous that of how much stuff there is actually going to be because i've heard today as well that the level cap in the actual game is 20 yeah really see, that's that's what i mentioned to you yesterday oh, i thought it might be that's really bad because i mean like it's taken me very little time to get to like level eight, eight. I mean, yeah, and like, I as heard... far as I can see, is the moon is like locked off to me. And I mean, personally, for me, Destiny's been um, a bit of up and down. Like, I really enjoy mm. playing some co-op in the way that you know, I just enjoy good playing co-op is always good, like good co-op with people. But yeah. um, I find if if you take Halo and you put it like tr- try and like correlate into like I guess filmic terms, like Halo's kind of like you know aliens right you know it's like the big military outing like super epic everyone's mm. everyone's you know shooting the aliens again far top this to me is really like destiny's really twee it's like really kind of like 12a about everything it, they have they have yeah. said specifically that that's something that they want to do though yeah but it's they... like phantom menace it's like you've just given me aliens and now you're going to give me the fucking phantom menace like i don't like personally for me i find like for me, the storyline doesn't hold together at all. Like I find, I don't, it's I very there. rarely know what I'm doing, yep. why I'm doing it, or I, I give very little of a shit. But I'm not sure how much you're supposed to in the beta. Like, yeah, but they if, haven't if gone this into is it their, If this is their yeah, opportunity they, to show us the yeah, game, they, then they, they should be, be that, like, giving us like that. That for I mean, beaters these days are usually treated like demos, um, and and Bungie particularly. They, I mean, it's. Internally, they refer to it as their delta. This is they've tested the game a lot, and they're now like handing it out so that everybody, so that they can get an idea of what the network load is going to be like, but also to show people the game. And mm. when they're doing that with something that isn't that that specific vertical slice that's that's showing off to their be- to its best, well, they're, they're mm. not gonna. It's, it's going to be that vertical slice. So if yeah. if it's lacking well, it in that, then I'm not sure if it's really going to be there in the game proper. Also, I'll put it forward yeah. that like I am level eight. And I am level eight from having a few rounds of Crucible and like playing just the missions that they've given to C- me. Crucible's once. the multiplayer, yeah, by the yeah. way. Yeah. So, um, so I'm almost halfway through to the level cap. Yeah. Right. And that's I'll, literally playing the I, game. I, I that's agree, not like me grinding it or anything. That's just me playing it. Like, yeah. what more it's, could they possibly have me. to give me the background? <laughs> like, but I think from what I heard, like. They're, they're encouraging people to hit the level cap. Like, they don't want people to never reach it. They want people to hit it, and then they can sort of access the full game. Like, they're treating it differently, which sounds really weird, but... That kind of is. end game MMO stuff being, like, there for everyone. I suppose I suppose there is a thing which is, which is that if you are going to have a multiplayer component, if everybody can hit that level cap so they've got the same selection of abilities... Um, and actually, there is something I quite like in the skill tree, which is that... It, 
and it isn't you can't have it in the beta but it's obviously something that's that's going to be in place as you unlock more abilities you don't just get additional abilities on top of the ones you've got you've got you get the options of picking between uh, several mm. several abilities you get like three things in each class each each of which will affect the way that you play in a different way and you get to pick between them which is pretty cool yeah. and also i suppose if the level cap's quite low then you can have multiple characters so yeah, yeah. no there's there's lots of bonuses to that yeah, yeah pre- there looked to be like some sort of thing where you like prestige at level 15 or something right and you get to mm. choose an alternate an alternate like, class you get like yeah. a subclass yeah yeah but I think I think you can flip back and forward between that as well. Like there's oh, okay. there's a whole different thing on top of the the different skill trees that I mentioned before. Yeah, it just doesn't mm. grab me, man. Like Destiny just doesn't grab me like the first Halo did. Like, and I sit and I'm yeah, but that's sitting, that's quite a lot. Yeah, but I don't know whether Bungie is spending their energies in the right direction. Like, I don't know if like as a company, not that I'm going to sit here and say that every Halo game is brilliant because it, quite frankly they're not. But, like, I mean, if you deliver me a game as good as Halo 1 and a game as good as Halo Reach, like, I'm kind of striving to try and get hey, a bit of that. Hey, Liz, did you, did you ever play the Halos? I did, yeah. Um, I, I played 1, 2, a little bit of 3, 4, and ODST. I never played Reach. And not Reach. Really. It's the best I know. one. Reach it's the I best know. one. Just burn so me at the stake. Just burn me at the stake. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like ODST, though, because I always found that that was trying to do something weird yeah and i like I respect there was a, games that do weird shit <laughs> yeah it was like from a different ex- different perspective and i i like that about it it wasn't just you just overpowered god of everything i kind of <laughs> i i had my problem with re uh, sorry not reach my problem with odst was that yes that new perspective was was kind of excellent but but it was still the gameplay of halo 3 too much so i still felt like an overpowered god well, it's like in, yeah. in Reach, I felt a lot more beaten down. <laughs> but you're a definite human overpowered god, which is not. Yeah, yeah. And also, I really enjoyed the fact that you were shorter. Mm. Yes, the fact I agree. That, the fact <laughs> that, that, that the grunts were like the like, same height as you. Like, yeah. just like a human size rather than like Master Chief's like eight Seven, foot. Seven, eight foot. Yeah, like, so it's like, you know, it you're just. It did make the mob like, seem bigger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, so you know, when I you're like coming up against the guy, they're like a brute chieftain or something, and you're like trying to shoot him in the face, like, and you're actually having to straighten up and be like, like I really enjoyed that. Like I thought that that was like really nice. No, I, yeah, I can care. I can care. But hey, anyway, Halo Four was awful though. You're yes. fucking hey, bro. Like I, that game was the the worstest. I I I don't know where I stand on the franchise going forward from this point. Yeah, well, after that one. I'm done. Like you're never just, done. <laughs> it got. It was just the I whole said that thing before, for me. You're was right. the, yeah, it was uh, like the weird romance between. Cortana yeah, and the and chief and like, Cortana, uh, I was like, I'm not feeling that's... this. She's she's not real. <laughs> <laughs> she's more human than human, bro. Like, what are you gonna do? Like, it was just so it was too, it was too ridiculous for me. I just I put the controller down at that point and just walked away. <laughs> <laughs> you did the right. Did choice. you wait? You mean you didn't even finish the game? <laughs> I did. I did finish. I came back and finished what it was that, like, and was even more disappointed by the. What's <laughs> about at the end of it? As <laughs> well. so, hold hold on, Jay. We're all talking over Sorry. each other. Like, what what did you say? I was like, what was the, I was I was just saying what. The, what the hell was the active time battle boss about at the end? You know, where it's like, you know, press the bar and quit. Yeah, 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 press X to not it's die. It's like, yeah, press X to not die. And you're like, this is very not what Halo is about. You're like shoving a grenade yeah. in this guy's mouth and like blowing him up. Because and everybody wants some Call of Duty in the Halo. And he was an awful yeah. villain as well. That's why Bungie never bothered with bosses. Because... No, but they did. And, that, and, they, and it always went wrong. Like, yeah, that was the problem yeah. with Halo T. They put, they put like eight a bunch of bosses in to kind of try and epic it up and so few of them had enough like personality when or interesting gameplay related to them to make to make it that good <laughs> although you're right I know what you're about to say punching the prophet of truth, truth over and over in the face <laughs> it was, was it really good <laughs> it was like guy on his little chair just hitting him in the fucking nose it was there's, brilliant there's nothing like beating up a cripple yeah that's true <laughs> oh man I hadn't even realised how not right that was <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> That's the name of the episode. <laughs> yeah, it totally is. Boom. It totally is. Cool. Okay, um, um, embarrassingly, we... I failed the end twice. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I think I failed it once. I can't even remember. Just, I just out of pure anger. anger. Yeah, <laughs> just that, like, I can't believe event. this is happening. Anyway. Is that ridiculous yeah. hard light cave that you're in? Oh, God, what was that about? Anyway, anyway, like, let's, let's stop talking about other it. Other games, other games to have been played. Exactly. Um, yeah, so Dan, what else have you got? Well, I've been playing loads of stuff since we talked before. <laughs> what, what's the best one? What's the best one? Um, 
I suppose Infamous Second Son. I yeah. finally got that. I yeah. played that all the way through. So you've you've quite liked the previous Infamous games, right? Yeah, I really liked uh, Infamous One was good, and then Infamous Two I thought was really really good. Yeah, I uh, see. I I like really enjoyed one, um, and then I felt like I'd kind of done it when it came to two. I know that it was supposed to be this massive step okay. up, but the the kind of there's that open world game problem. The fact that when you have an open world game, you always want to fill fill it with with stuff, and it's very hard to make much of that content particularly focused. So there's a lot of kind of mm. um, like save this civilian, collect this thing mission missions going on. Yeah, so, yeah, I think I think Infamous does suffer from that a lot, like in two and in Second Son as well. Mm-hmm. But what they do, well, what two did really well is I thought the story was actually pretty compelling, and like the characters really quite interesting, and then. Infamous Second Son is kind of good with characters, and they've got really good technology, like so the faces and stuff look really good. But it kind of falls flat, and it doesn't really reference the previous games much. I have but a question about it's one of the most fun games I've ever played. <laughs> the the new Infamous, right? There's something that puts mm. me off about it, right? Mm-hmm. I don't want to be Delson. He looks like a numpty, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like he, every advert or video that I see with him in, it's like he's just like spewing forth this weird I'm an anarcho asshole rhetoric. And I'm like, I don't want to be you. I don't want to like him. Im- 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 he doesn't like connect with me. He is as essentially a an entitled anarchist, yeah. And he doesn't grow, I've heard. That was the thing when I was researching out to see if I wanted to play it. I was like, does that come to a head? The fact that he is this way, does, is that something that happens? But like, everyone's been like, nah, nah, he just goes on being a dick and then he wins. <laughs> yeah, and then he's just still a dick. And I'm like, well, I don't, I'm not really interested in character art. That's like that. quite a general video game problem. And it, no, but Delson was vibing that well, so much was, harder than everyone by pretending to be an actual character. And also, like, this is, this is also Cole, this is the Cole thing, in right? the previous games was much better. Yeah, like, really? Yeah. Cole was better? Because he didn't, because like Cole <laughs> had the thing where he didn't want his powers, but then he, you know, he He had Jensen them. Syndrome. He um, then, yeah, the, yeah. He didn't want it's, them, it's, but it's he the, can then use them to. It's the hero's journey, right? Like it's it's one yeah. of the like stories, one of the seven stories that everything's based on. Like the the hero that doesn't want to be the hero kind of thing. I didn't ask for this. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Whereas, exactly. Uh, <laughs> whereas yeah, but Delson Cole was is so in... yeah, but he was uh, for me. He was over the line the other way. He was such a miserableist that I was just kind of sitting there going like, also, I don't buy the like good bad. Systems oh yeah, the, the, the whole binary system yeah, of good like, and evil. Uh, because it's it's so it's so it's so fable. Yeah, like and it's <laughs> like it's like oh, you either do this thing or you do this thing. But at the same time, I never really feel like like there's no middle ground. I really hate games that provide me with no middle ground because it's like I mean Mass Effect, right? Like, yo, if you're going to pull a gun on me, I'll kick you out this fucking window. Like, that's what's going to happen. But, like, at the same time, you know, if I'm trying to, like, improve race relations between two people, I'm going to be a nice guy about it. Like, so... I, Mass Effect's still quite binary, though. But at the same time... Yeah, but I was this paragon, renegade, but middle the, man. The binary choices, like, apply to the same character. Like, it's... Even though, even though like, you you have the... You can either punch him in the face or, like, sit them down and have a yeah, chat with Yeah, that rapport, them. I just... <laughs> punch her in the face over and over again, bro. Like. Because, because you're an asshole. But like you, Given. You, you, that's kind of that's kind of the choice in Mass Effect. Not are you going to save the universe or like take it over and and turn it to your own evil means. It's like are you going to save it by being an me? asshole or are you going to save it by being too fucking nice? And no yeah, one but wants, I was no like, I, nice. I always found myself living halfway between like Jack Bauer and Banky Moon. Like, it was like that's kind of where I was at with that like video game. That, that's a was, that's really, a lot of middle ground though. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> there's a massive middle ground there. But I enjoyed that. Jack, Whereas, like, Jack Banky Moon. Jack Banky Moon. <laughs> he should have his own series. Yeah. But yeah, no, I think I think like um, moral choice is always pretty interesting as something how, how you introduce it as a mechanic it's it's difficult to it's difficult to make it make sense and still like work mechanically um and mass effect's been pretty good at it i mean obviously the witcher is the best thing at it but i'm always waxing lyrical about the witcher no it's good um but yeah i'm it's the the way it works in infamous was always quite quite like fable but the world the world reacted to you but the story didn't like it still has it to go to the same. Two. It did, 
in Infamous Two. See, I never, I never like got that far into, into Infamous Two. So it comes to a head. Infamous Two does Infamous 2. like is definitely the best with the car, like because they call it the karma system. Like it is, it's either you are a super villain or you are a superhero. Wait, so you're saying and you found it? You found it better in Infamous Two than in Second Son? Yeah, definitely. Infamous Two does it has a really good plot twist at the end, no matter which route you take. Mm-hmm. And that, but they're different, and then the games end very differently. And then for Second Son, they had to pick the good ending from Infamous 2 and pick that as canon. Oh, okay. Because in the evil ending, essentially, you become an evil overlord and they, you kill everyone. They totally should have gone with that yeah, one. Yeah, they should have gone with that one. <laughs> <laughs> No, because, because but, um, I mean, I mean look, look at Diablo. How, how good is it in, Di- in Diablo 2 that the, the big bad that you're having to face off against is who you played as in Diablo yeah. 1? Oh, it's amazing. Like that that fall from from Grace, like it's it's an old story, but I always think it works really well in video games, especially when you when you've got it in those chapters and you can be. They did that with the prototype series as well, didn't they? I, I remember. I think they, really, like, yeah. I think in prototype See, two, I have prototype, the main I characters it. like I haven't played prototype two, but I think I heard that. Like, oh yeah, no, he's yeah. hunting Alex Mercer. Who's yeah, the but main he, like, he like killed his one. wife or something. Yeah, killed like his that? wife in the. Well, Alex Mercer kills a lot of yeah, yeah, yeah. people when prototype one. Like, he doesn't really give a shit. I mean, he's body surfing civilians across the floor which is awesome but um, so like not not but also nice horrible way, so, like, live. But, hey. no cool cool um yeah bloody morality systems i think that's like a topic we need to explore like uh, i can talk about solidly systems, at some point yeah but, hey. um so yeah has anybody got any other games that they want to talk about that they played particularly or should we like jump into the news i might uh, or, I, i'm I just gonna one. drop a few Oh yeah, go uh, for it, Dan. Go for it. I finally, I finally actually finished Persona Four. Turns uh, out there was a whole lot more of that game. <laughs> I, I love this. The, the this was ridiculous. The yeah. continual additional endings of Persona Four. <laughs> yeah, it kept it kept going, mm-hmm. and then it got even more meta. So, 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 how many times have you finished it so far? <laughs> <laughs> about four. Yeah, I, th- I thought I hit the end <laughs> about four times. <laughs> but um, um, yeah, so, so I got the I got the the best ending now, and it's all good. And it's a great game, really good in terms of like, it doesn't really have any morality, but like character progression and character relations, it does that really well. It kind of reminded me of Mass Effect. I don't know, it doesn't, um, but like, it does have some interesting kind of commentary to make on, on like, well, I mean, I guess Japanese school life, but it kind of stretches out into kind of more interesting things about media perception of stuff, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like that, and it's about sort of like the desires of humankind, and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's very strange, like about what we want to see and things like that. It's really weird, but it's really good. It's a um, game I want to pick up soon. Actually, uh, hearing the previous podcast you guys did talking about it, it'll mm-hmm. be interesting. Mm-hmm. It's really so. good. I definitely recommend it, but it's a big yeah, investment. It's on my list. Like, yeah, cool. T- and time investment. Or... <laughs> yeah, yeah, time investment. But it's, you've just I mean, you you've just taken your time and like played it a little bit at a time for a long time, right? That's like yeah, yeah. I played it's a, a viable way since, to play the game. Yeah, yeah, I've played a little bit since Christmas, and I only finished it like a couple of weeks ago. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> and so, then, uh, and mm-hmm. then I jumped into Final Fantasy X HD because it was uh, on sale. Oh man, that I mean, that I've, was always I've an completely excellent game. fallen down that rabbit hole. <laughs> It's Again. like just nostalgia. <laughs> um, you've got it as well. Yeah, yeah, I do. It's really good. Um, I mean, like I've I've always been a fan of Final Fantasy X. I know it's like, I mean, it's not my favorite Final Fantasy, but um, at the same time, I I think it got like a lot of bad hype when it was like coming out. Like, I, I think it's one of the ones that a lot of people dislike. But um, I've always liked it. I think it's a good story. I mean, it's true that it's the beginning of where Squaresoft started to hit this linearity thing you know mm. about like crafting a story that takes you on a path but um, unlike Final Fantasy 13 I didn't find it so much of a hindrance I found it to be like a really really good vibe and playing it again is this swell of nostalgia because like well Nobu Matsu just kills it with music and yeah, as soon as you hear one of his good, yeah. yeah when you hear one of his riffs it just takes you back to the time and the place that you were when you first engaged with that game and just makes you kind of want to blob up which you know is all right that's a good that's a good and vibe. i think i think even like years on like the voice acting and stuff is dodgy yeah but, but it was like, bad at the time right yeah but it's oh, still like I, it's terrible. impressed me with how good it is like <laughs> i just i, I kind I, of forgot how good it was i kind of like because i spent that entire like game like going through it just like wanting to slap yuna 
because of her vo- how bad her voice acting was. It was like, oh, he's Calamari. We don't understand him either. <laughs> like that was kind of my, like my vibe. I just wanted to like get in there and just like her like impromptu laughing where she's just like, oh. That creeped me out so <laughs> much. The last played. scene is hysterical. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just, I just remember being driven completely mad by Tidus's voice. Like, it just, I don't mind Tidus. Tidus is fine. Like, Yuna's my being, my by, by far and away the worst for me. But fair enough. I, 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 I did think still. Once love you get game. into it, you can forgive it all. Like, you yeah, get involved it is a great, enough. It's a great you... game. Like, it's really good. Uh, just, um, it's not. It's, are you, uh, is it Spira? Is that the world? Yeah, that it's yeah. yeah. Spira is just a really nice place to exist. No, I really like it. Like, I think it's a really well constructed world that has um, where everything feeds into itself in the right way. You mm-hmm. know, like the cult, the different cultures that live there and the sports that they play and how they play them. I think they all come together yeah. to create a real, real world. Which it's I, also which got I a lot to say about like race and religion. Yeah, like in quite substantial ways. Yeah, in heavy terms for a Final Fantasy. Yeah. Um, in terms of like the linearity of it, though, I think. It's it's become a thing since then that Square's been trying to to chase the the Western demographic and thinking that that's like a part of the way that games are made on on this side of of the Pacific. So thinking that that's how they should go about doing it. But I think with that one, they it was actually just artistic intent that led them to having that that yeah, kind of yeah, on road. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, because yeah, it's a journey, right? Yeah. So it's like you know, they, it's the constant march mm-hmm. and um, like leading towards a goal, and that's what's going on there. Although you know, most of the Final Fantasies have that. I mean, like in some mm-hmm. form, Final yeah. Fantasy VII, you're always aiming for that. It's crater, kind of right. Like, it's kind of pure. In well, it's I guess. It was a way of doing the same thing, but kind of cutting out some of the the possible extraneous stuff on the sides. But yeah, I mean, the thing that I'm I not dislike, that I want to say there's anything particularly extraneous about Final Fantasy VII, but you know, yeah, the thing that I just like is like um, with most of the Final Fantasies now, um, like back in the PS1 days, uh, the secret stuff was the stuff that I liked the most, and mm. um, since everything's been put on set pathways. Um, I've found the getting to the secrets and engaging with the secrets like less rewarding because there's not dungeons that you can find before you're too hard and stuff but like Final that. Fantasy, I think Final Fantasy X does secrets really well. Really? Like, I think... I I, think... Cause I've just got to a point now where you can kind of start to just sort of feel the the first steps on some of these secret paths. Is that like the calm like... lands? Yeah, 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 yeah. So like I've just found like the, the secret... Uh, cave and then the secret temple which has all these side quests and stuff yeah. and you can only just start them at this point and then you can do them more later yeah but you're like long but you're quite a long distance into it i mean like on final fantasy yeah, yeah, 7 yeah. you're like recruiting you're recruiting yuffie on like disc one if you oh know yeah that's a, that's so good yeah you can totally miss that yeah so in terms of games that allow you to go to places that are too hard for you um, I have been having an excellent crack at Dark Souls, um, oh. the first one <laughs> rather than the sequel, um, since since like our last recording, um, and I'm kind of in love with that game. It is it I is something Dark really Souls. special and something very different to anything that I played before. Um, the the kind of brutality of the combat and mm. the precision of of the gameplay so that you never feel like it, it's uh it's kicking your ass unfairly and that you could always yeah, it's never unfair you could always if you just if you just like think about it a bit more if you just make sure that you're in the right position when you're in that combat like take on whatever enemy <laughs> you're fighting and the incredible like level well i want to say level design but it's actually world design the way that everything feeds back into itself this kind of yeah, strange yeah. dreamlike so landscape than like yeah. I find the level yeah, yeah, design yeah. in the level design in Dark Souls One, just the way that everything closes back into itself, is uh, is a, it's a real achievement. And I don't, uh, there's very rarely games that like manage to create that like sense of place mm. where you understand two, where you two are. Two is so lazy in comparison. Yeah, yeah. Like no. Two is essentially you start in the middle and you go out on five different branches, and then just teleport back. As soon as you get to the end, you just walk back to the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's been it's been really good. Um, I I was kind of hashing it out with with both you, Joe, and you, Dan, and, like working out whether to get one or two. Um, and yeah, like 
it, I think I made the right choice. Yeah, two has some yeah, real definitely. strengths, though. Like, I think, like, um, I found this, like, I, th- I found two's, like, a sense of atmosphere, like, with, like, musical intent and stuff for, like, different areas of the world, like, to be really, really, really on point. Like, I, I was, like, really engrossed in what Dark Souls 2 was pushing in the way that it was kind mm. of pushing it. But it's just when you get down to the core of what Dark Souls is about, it just doesn't deliver as well as Dark Souls 1 did. It feels... No. It feels compromised. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, definitely. And that's, well, hopefully Bloodborne won't have that problem. Yeah, well, I'm hoping the Bloodborne won't. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, like, so. So Bloodborne's the game uh, being made by... Um, what is the same... The f- director. Exactly. Same director. Yeah, of, of, um, of Demon Souls and Dark Souls. Who didn't yeah. direct Dark Souls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, no, it's been excellent. I've, I've been absolutely adoring playing it. But um, yeah, Destiny's kind of taken over for the last couple of days. So have you got through your selection of games, Dan? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah? They're the ones. They're the major ones. <laughs> cool. All right, then. I guess we'll take a break and we'll come back for news afterwards. So, welcome back, and now we're going to talk a bit about some recent news and which bits we all each find interesting. So, the first bit I've got down is Battlefield Hardline and Dragon Age Inquisition have both been delayed to 2015. I find that dun, dun, dun. I find that really very interesting. I think that says um, a good thing about where EA is at at the moment, that they are bothered to kind of adhere to the criticisms of their games and... They, they recognise that they... Well, I mean, they showed off Battlefield Hardline and people had a lot of problems and they've realised they need to go back to... Well, not necessarily all the way back to the drawing board, but do some serious work on it. And that little bit of extra time for uh, for Dragon Age will probably make it, well, less buggy and a bit more tuned and it's it's their flagship title of this year, so they, they need to be on that. Yeah, but it's not this year anymore. Like, what I'm not, do they I, have it, this year It now? is... No, sorry. Dragon Age is this year still. It's, oh, it's only it? been de- oh, okay. delayed by a couple of weeks. It was delayed oh, from right, from sorry. the 18th of, of October to the 21st of November, I think. Okay. so is that, I've but, got it down as 18th of November. Um, but then... So, sorry. It was from the 7th of October, I've got it written down here, to the 21st of November in, in our country. It's, it's a bit mm. earlier in, in America, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. But so, is that the only game they've got this year? I mean, it's their it's their flagship one. I'm sure they've got a bunch of sports titles. But oh, of course they do. You yeah, know, they like their sports games. I'm sure. I'm sure we've got listeners that quite like them. But I'm not that fussed about them. So okay, we're gonna get Wayne on to talk about oh, FIFA yeah. when it's uh, true. FIFA he comes he out. knows all about. He knows all about <laughs> FIFA and Forza. Um, but yeah, yeah. Like I said, I think I think it's probably quite a good thing. Like I'm I'm not sure how you guys feel. I I I always welcome. Um, delays or p- be pushing a title back because at least it's going to hopefully be better. Yeah. Unless it's not better and then it's bad. <laughs> I kind of always I like as I get older, I'm like more and more and more okay. I remember when I was like a young and just waiting for that video game to drop, you know, and I'd be like, "That son of a bitch, that's so far away." <laughs> Whereas now I'm like, "Oh, you know, like that's just the ex." like the acceleration towards the end of my life means that I don't actually have to wait as long as I did when I was 40 <laughs> for a fucking video game. But, um, yep. you know, this, and so that, that's kind of good. I mean, I don't think it always works. I mean, like, with certain games, I think delays... Do Knukem Forever, the most yes, aptly named game in the say. world. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, that's, like, a classic example, but, like, I mean, like, I always felt that Watch Dogs dropped off because it saw GTA 5 and was like oh you know what our game is nowhere near as good as this yet at the same time they released a game that was nowhere near as good so there's another interesting piece of news GTA they changed it entirely though there's another interesting piece of news the, the the mod for PC that made Watch Dogs like as good as it was supposed to be in the original trailer has come yeah. out and it's, and it's uh, 1.0 form um, hmm. so yeah like if you are playing that game on PC now you can actually have it looking as good as it should and also the weird thing is even though they've made it look better apparently it runs way better as well <laughs> like people <laughs> that were suffering kind of frame rate stutters and like sub 60 frames a second on like relatively decent graphics card make the game look better and run at 60 frames a second solidly so that's quite nice wow. but um yeah um, have you have you got anything anything else that's like um 
like shown uh, stuck out to you this week so far, Dan? Or is that all uh, of the particularly yeah. interesting bits of news the, you got? The the other bit I have is The Last of Us Live. Oh, of course. Okay. What the hell is The Last of Us Live? <laughs> so uh, it's going to be it's a free event in Santa Monica, California, and uh, Neil Druckmann, the one of the game designers on The Last of Us, and m- most of the main cast members are getting together for a live reading of some of the major scenes in the game. And oh, so tickets... it's like actual, the actual actors are, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not just a live playing or... Yeah, and That's uh, amazing. tickets are free, like if you can get access to tickets, like you apply for them online, then you can get them and it's free, and then it's also going to be streamed everywhere, like mm. on PlayStation, on Twitch and... Oh no shit! Are they doing awesome. just scenes from The Last of Us or are they doing some from Left Behind as just... well? Uh, I don't know. Just, uh, I, well, possibly both, I think. They haven't specified. I don't know. I'm not sure if that'll be, like, excellent or pointless. I think it'll be excellent. I think it's just good for the fans. It's just Yeah, a, I, a like, fan. I like a bit of that. Like, um, yeah. I remember Troy Baker did a reading, uh, like, Comic-Con, maybe, of uh, his yeah. interpretation of the Joker. Yeah, um, the Killing like, Joke monologue. Yeah, and, and killed it. Like, mm-hmm. it was really good it slowed it out of the pocket it was really really, really no, good. fair play I mean I suppose he's just so talented as like a, like watching them do that I mean having watched the uh, documentary of like Grounded mm-hmm. yeah, that yeah. was fantastic and yeah, that's the making of the last of us by the way g- gave me an yeah. insight into what was going on there and the fact that they put so much emphasis on the uh, motion capture part of it I mean they spent a good like half hour of that documentary just talking about that was excellent i found it really interesting to see that process so i guess seeing that live <laughs> is something that i would do i wouldn't do it for everything but the last of us is so far ahead mm. in the terms of like narrative ex- exposition the um and not just in games just it. just narrative exposition like all over anywhere um yeah okay. I, I think yeah, it's you've really good that, to watch it <laughs> i think it's really good that the voice like video game voice actors are getting something that is honoring them so much mm-hmm. like yeah it's they're considering so that often it, you just have to ignored be, considering yeah. that you have to be fairly niche to like actually know who they are and and recognize the names that yeah at the same time we need more of them though i do believe we, we, we need to stop, yeah, using, stop the using the same voice actors all the time there's got to be other people out there that can deliver as well as yeah. these people that are like uh, the Nolan Norths and uh, Troy Bakers Troy and Bakers. Stephen Blooms and Robert Atkin <laughs> Downses of this universe, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who I think all of those guys are fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like, don't get me wrong, but they do kind of like corn hold a market. But the trend at the moment is to is to like bring in actual actual like known Hollywood or television actors as well. That uh, mm-hmm. that if you know someone's a good actor, hopefully they'll yeah. they'll be able well, to bring something. We'll see how Destiny games. deals with that when it gets his like actual release. But I've not been mm. impressed so far. Yeah, no, it's a reasonable point. But um, Dishonored did the did the same thing. There's like a few like known. I, yeah, I, no, not that I can are. remember any of their names. Yeah. But... Uh, no, I know. Yeah. Also, Ellen Page and Beyond Two Stars. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, yeah. and, and, and uh, Will Defoe. Defoe. And that. <laughs> well, that's uh, like Beyond Two Souls. Let's be honest, has its issues, but um, at the same time, its voice acting isn't really one of them. I enjoyed the performances of Ellen Page and the Foe within that mm-hmm. vi- within that video. Game. I, yeah, I never played it. Did, did you give it a go, Dan? No, I haven't played it. I, I've got a friend who really, really liked it, but I, I watched it. I played Heavy Rain. <laughs> oh, I and thought I really it was better. I thought it was better than Heavy Rain. I, I and I know right. that's really controversial. I thought Heavy Rain sucks out. Like, yeah, I... so did I. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I feel that the review scores that came in were more about punishing how badly people felt about the scores they're given Heavy Rain, rather than about how bad. Beyond Two Souls was, which because I think as the art form that it was, it was a much purer, much well, like much better put together idea of a movie game than. Uh, but I heard than Heavy Rain was. the the major complaint yeah. I heard, which is pretty fundamental, is nothing you do, no, none of your inputs make any impact. Same with Heavy yeah, Rain. Yeah, it though, is right? playing a movie. No, no, because right. Heavy Rain, multiple people died. It had about thirty different endings. Yeah, but the same. No, but well, you get to make a choice at the end of Beyond Two Souls that completely changes what ending you get. 
yeah, you decide but, um, what happens. Yeah, but with that's, that's only present afterwards. at the very end. Yeah, yeah but in yeah. Heavy Rain, your character can die in the first act, and the story will still continue. Well, and the yeah, story will still continue. Yeah, but at the same time, like in Beyond Two Souls, there's like a guy that they keep pushing on you as being your like love interest, right? And they're like, this guy, he should be your love interest. He's like the great white American hope, and being it's able terrible, to it's not. being able to <laughs> tell the great white American hope to go fuck himself over and over and over again <laughs> was brilliant. Like, as a miniature decision, like, like you know, you're at the end of the last mission, he's like, oh, you know, we should have always been together. And I'm like, no, you're a cunt, mate. <laughs> like, I don't want anything to do with you. Like, you're a terrible, terrible person, and I don't want to be with you. I'm going to go and jam out with these guys that I met, like, way back when in the Yeah, saying that, I did like that you had the option to date well, to end up with the, the random dude you met you with for like two days or something yeah that was that was quite but there's also but... like non-sexualized options that you can pick for the ending of jody's stories yeah, as just, well just being so, alone yeah so it's like you can like be alone or you can like go and go to like is this... perhaps the the differentiation that in um in heavy rain the the kind of it's the broader strokes of the narrative that you have a choice in but um in um in uh, what the hell's the name of the game? Fuck, we've only just mentioned it. Beyond Two Souls. Um, mm. the, it's it's more to do with the kind of nuanced relationships that the, the characters that, that it's based on have. Yeah, I, I that agree sounds that. fair. Yeah. I mean, the thing about... I, I haven't played Heavy Rain, but as you are saying, the, the point that you can die in the first act and the game carries on, um, that those are pretty key key things that can change but within yeah, Beyond the, Two Souls it, the only difference was it, it mattered who you saw at the end or who was still alive at the end but still you got to the end the same way yeah but at the, at the same time like in Heavy Rain you can never change who the origami killer is right no, which is the but that's weak. the natural like end point of it right so you can adapt the ending you can change it but like you can't like because you know you have those like five characters or whatever that you play as i yeah, i was yeah. really hoping that the game would flip who the origami killer was depending on what happened and mm. how the situation panned out that would have been awesome but it didn't do that and but, yeah, but, but that, beyond that two souls never made me feel then. like it was trying to do that mm. as a because it's think... not a murder mystery no no Ah, oh, the um, emotions of David Cage. Uh, all one of, of those emotions. Really liked in, <laughs> one, one of the particular examples in Heavy Rain I really liked, though, was one of the characters, like, used this sort of drug to make himself better at solving crimes, yeah. essentially. And if you go down a certain path with him, he, he essentially overdoses. Yeah. <laughs> and he but, becomes, like, this... He becomes this weird drug addict, and... He, does it? Does he get? Does he get even better at solving crimes when he's addicted, though? Is he, no, like, some no, kind of he, broken... No, he just, no, he just breaks down. Oh, if only, damn. if only the voice acting in that game <laughs> could have actually stepped up to the plate. Like the weird kind of French Canadian voice acting, trying yeah, to be American yeah, thing that they have going on in it, really hurts it for me. And the fact that Ellen Page and Willem Dafoe are just there being good at acting in mm. Beyond Two Souls made me able to believe in it more. Mm. You yeah, know? I do want to play it. I just haven't got around to it. It's a fairly good game. It's you know, it's worth it. You maybe shouldn't buy it, but I can definitely lend it to you then. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Don't don't buy it. But uh, <laughs> I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have the money to buy it, but <laughs> I've got, I'm committing to other things. Anyway, guys, back to the news. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> ah, I've I've got like a couple of things that I've noticed that have been going on, but like since E3, there doesn't seem to have been like much particularly exciting in my universe. Um, like QuakeCon happened and. There's been on the um, esports side of things the international and Evo going on, but obviously they're the international and Evo are both absolutely massive for people that are really into them. But I I have never really seen a way into um, fighting games, and I am still very dubious about actually sticking my head too far into Dota because I think I'd love it, but I think it might break me. <laughs> I think you might like it too. Oh, have you, have you been, been playing Dota? Dota? No, I've been on a League of Legends binge, but like I, I, I still like both of the games really. But I just don't play Dota. But because um, the LCSs have been going on for the League of Legends summer series something, <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I know what you mean in that. If you're interested in it, it's really, really exciting seeing um, the esports. But 
if if it's not something you're into. It's it's dangerous territory because you could just get sucked in, and that's what you want to do. On a PS1 control pad. Yeah, I actually yeah. watched some. I actually watched some Mortal Kombat Evo, and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> it's not the first time I've ever watched any of it, but what Mortal I watched Kombat a few. Uh, the newest one, Mortal Kombat oh, Nine. Okay, yeah, yeah, but it was pretty exciting. And then I also tried to watch the noob stream for Dota, and okay. I just got lost in the first fight. I got bored. Essentially, it's not very fun to watch. Like, yeah, it's one of those. On. It's one of those games. Unless you know it, it's difficult to to watch. I yeah. mean, I, I even can't... on like even on this newbie stream where they were trying to explain everything, I was just like, nah, I can't be bothered. Yeah, with this. I, I found I found trying to well, because I play League, trying to explain League to someone, just their eyes glaze over. And even though I'm really excited about it, and I think I'm doing a good <laughs> job explaining it, I just <laughs> you can tell they're not not just not going to unless they play it and get hooked in themselves. Mm, yeah. It's difficult. I to, quite like people explaining their like passions to me, and I've had some good conversations with people that have played like LOL in the past. Um, because it's interesting to me because it's kind of based off of things that I understand you know like that kind of western RPG architecture and stuff like that Mm -hmm. which I really enjoy but at the same time I don't think I get personally much out of playing them I they're not that like that kind of like rinse and repeat thing is you're, like not you're not like you're not a massively before. competitive man though yeah no I'm not a, and, I'm not no. and, like, and I, I really, really, really aggro, am, I, I love to like pit myself in some kind of contest of skill against other well, people like I don't like shooting yes. people in the face on multiplayer but like at the same time but, but you're there to have fun I'm there to win yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I don't I guess, if I start playing, it, yeah, like, I, never, I can just I, be consumed. I don't, by I don't, it. I don't play to win. I've mm-hmm. never played yeah. to win, and I will never play to win. I play to have a good time. But at the, and that's and, a bit yeah, but at the same time, it means I'll never have the fire. The fire. I'll never the have fire. That. I don't know. I don't. Mate, should we clarify what League of Legends and Dota are? That actually, that's a good point. Um, which <laughs> it's, knows what Dota is. Yeah, uh, but multiplayer online battle arenas. Because you don't have to say the words. Don't. We're not allowed to say on this po- po- podcast. What words? But it's it's kind of like this this game about like this thing like. Um, so, I think I think the thing is though until until I had it explained to me very recently, I didn't have a, a good concept of the basic mechanics that the game is set up around, like the victory conditions. The mm-hmm. the fact that the concept is that you have to push into the opposing territory, it's it's a top down game and you're and you've got a, a selection of five heroes like spread across a map trying trying to push into a, an opposing territory to break down a base. Nobody Fire had, three lanes. Nobody has successfully told me that before. It's ridiculous yeah. considering the kind of conversations that I had about the game. But yeah, it's it's in concept it isn't very complicated, but what makes it complicated is that those heroes can all have a vast selection of different abilities that all counter mm-hmm. like different different ones of those heroes in different ways. So And your composition matters incredibly as as, as well as player skill mm-hmm. for each character being played. Mm-hmm. And and where you position all, all of those heroes on on the battlefield can completely change the way that things work. So yeah, I, I, I've also been um, watching some of the noobs the noob stream and finding myself kind of drifting off, but also knowing that if I hold on for long enough, then it will start <laughs> to make sense and I'll really be able to like key into the thing that that people love about the game. So yeah, I think playing it for a few times and actually getting experiencing it yourself helps more to enjoy mm-hmm. watching other yeah. people playing it for that specific game type uh, what's the um what's the um moba are we going to call it a moba or a uh, lords of management game i'm not sure um well it's yeah multiplayer online battle arena is moba so What's the... I think that's what most people know it as. Indeed. Yeah, it's definitely what most people know. I, 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 tried to get, game. I tried to get MOBA yeah. banned as a word that was said. It doesn't, like, it doesn't mean anything, though. No, I know. I know. It's just my own personal prejudice. No, no, no. So but, many people shout at each other about it at the but, pub. But that's exactly the thing. <laughs> it, it, those words, if you say multiplayer online battle arena, and, like, how, unless you have a specific concept of exactly what that is, how are you supposed to interpret that as the game type that it is? It's it's a really bad genre name. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't it's know. There's some girl. Like, there's so many. Like, you know, they fall into the same. Moba sounds more like Smash yeah, but, Bros. But massive, massively multiplayer online RPG. I'm, it's not an RPG. Really. Um, no, 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 but but Mamorpaga. Oh, sorry. MMORPG. Yeah. Like you can you can understand what that is. 
if somebody, yeah. if somebody just says that word to you, have some kind of glimmer of insight into um, what on earth that kind of game might be like. But massive online ballerino. Like, I just I think, I just think, I, I, I just think, I just think the Thunderdome, but really, really big. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think Smash Bros sounds like the mm. best suited to that to it's, MOBA. Yeah, multiplayer Except, online battle arena sounds like Smash Bros. I like. agree. I agree. That. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. It's a bad genre name. I I put yeah. my foot down. Um. Anyway, back to the news. Um, yeah. So you had something, a couple of other things, didn't you, Liz? Me? Yes, I did. Um. What should I start with? I'll start with the Yog Ventures Kickstarter cancelling. So I've I've heard about this, but I don't know what the Yog Cast and Yog Ventures is at all. Okay, so the Yog Cast is a channel on YouTube run by Lewis Brindley and Simon. I don't know what his last name is, but <laughs> he's a dwarf. He's not really. Um, and they got popular playing Minecraft and also, well, actually playing um, World of Warcraft, but then Minecraft got them more popular and they just got so famous that they decided to team up with um oh, i can't remember the name of the publisher but uh to create a game um to build a game that was just massive in scope incredibly large mm-hmm. um and they started kickstarter for it um after they raised over five hundred thousand uh, dollars but something had happened the person they put in charge of managing the budget hired an artist um, I think he was paid over thirty-five grand up front. Uh, he worked on it on the on the project for two weeks before going off to work for Lucas Arts. Um, and because they fluffed the um, contract with this guy, there was nothing they could do. And so far, they lost a lot of money and then just decided to stop stop the Kickstarter for the game. And a lot of people lost out, mm-hmm. which is sad. I'm not entirely sure what the game was supposed to be. As far as I know, it was. It was just too big. It was like open world slash build your own things. A little, <laughs> I guess, like a little bit like Project Spark to create your own games within. Mm. Um, oh, and wow. I think there was a, a campaign as well or something. I'm not entirely sure. You can research that yourselves, but so, it was too big, too big for their boots. Let's just say. So what? I mean, the the kind of cancellation of it, as as far as I understood, has resulted in them taking the the Kickstarter money that people have given them and, and spending that on other games that they're now giving back to those people, correct? Something like that, yeah. So part of the money's going into um, be, like producing the physical rewards that they promised the people. Oh, okay. Already. And also, instead of refunding the money, they're, um, yeah, they're, they're giving them a different game. That seems pretty unreasonable. Like, I mean, like, obviously they can get some kind of an excellent deal yeah. on that, so they're not... It depends how much you pledge, though. If, it, if you only pledge, like, $25, you know... What if you already got the game where it's not one you, you yeah. want, though? Oh, like, the physical rewards! Don't, just, don't tap the microphone. It's <laughs> the worst thing to tap. <laughs> <laughs> Go again. Are the physical rewards based on the, like, um, vaporware product that never turned up? Yes. No. no? Oh, no, oh, well, I, I, think oh, I don't know. Right, so you're going to get like a soundtrack for a game that doesn't exist or a statue or like a for a game that I'm hoping exist, they or... don't do something like that. That would just be depressing. Oh my yeah. god, no, that'd be the best. The imagine imagine the like, taste of what you can never have. The weird yeah. kind of gain of worth that that kind of stuff might have, though. Like, well, having... I also think mm-hmm. it's something like t-shirts as well that promote the game, which is not never going to exist. Not, it, it, even, if it's, like, even if it's just something with the name on it. You know, key rings, t-shirts, mugs, it's still got the name of the game that isn't theirs. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure how how I'd feel about that if I was... be slightly depressing. You'd look, you'd look over it to, to every yeah. time you had a cup of tea and think, oh, this cup of tea oh. tastes bitter now. <laughs> <laughs> this mug cost me a hundred dollars. Yeah, oh well, okay. So, yeah, um, that's quite sad. So what's the other thing? Um, what's the other thing? The other thing is... Uh, Oddworld new and tasty remake which I'm so excited for but I'm saddened because there's been no news of it coming to Steam and I'm not a console gamer anymore so I'm I'm quite confused about that I assumed I mean I know it's out today on PS4 which makes me very yeah. happy because I have one um, but I assumed that it was going to be out on PC first because I, I, I was um, listening to an interview with Lorne Lanning uh, listening to reading an interview with Lorne Lanning um, 
and he was talking at length about the only way that they managed to fund the, the making of New and Tasty is that they'd um, reacquired the IP from, from their publishers due to a bit of a legal dispute and then, and then been selling the old games on, on Steam. And like, yes. all of that money had just been feeding back into making New and Tasty. So obviously the, the serious fan base that they have that like, values them enough to, to like, put, put their money down is, yeah. is on Steam. Um, the, uh, yeah, the, it, the old it's games. Got to come to it eventually. The old games and the HD remakes have been on PlayStation as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Oh yeah, but I mean, I mean, uh, well, uh, Strangers Wrath was a Xbox exclusive, right? Mm. Uh, that and PC. But Did, and now it, that's that... been that's been ported. All of them have been ported over to the like PSN. Mm-hmm. Now mm-hmm. even Munch. Even Munch's Odyssey. Even Munch's Odyssey. Yeah. Sweet. I loved Munch's Odyssey. I, I mean, like, that that whole universe of, well, that, that literal, like, own kind of created well, universe that they have is, yeah, Odd is World absolutely is excellent. Odd, Odd World is, is something really special. That it's the, artistically, it's completely artistically different. burgeoning and really quite commentary on our own stuff that we have going on. Like, Abe, yeah. I always found that, like, uh, when, I, when I put in... Abe's Odyssey for the first time being hit by that first cutscene which is basically like this is how capitalism works kids they're gonna <laughs> eat you in the end <laughs> like I found to be fucking brilliant like we've run really, out of really cows brilliant. so we're gonna feed you people yeah um, it's people yeah 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 no, so I'm, I'm very excited for the remake me but too. I, I don't know if it, I'm hoping is it just gonna be exactly the same as Odd no, Odyssey. there's there's new stuff in it, um, and that, stuff. that scares me. But at the same, that but I mean, it excites me a little it's bit. It's the whole it's the whole same old team, though, right? Like it's not yeah. it's not that it's a remake that's been handed off to somebody else, and that they've decided that they're going to try and improve it by making it more more streamlined and. Abe actually. suddenly is a suave, suave, smooth talking hero. Mm, that, um, wears dark glasses. Can control and, his flashes. And a fedora. <laughs> 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 mm-hmm. um, yeah, no, as long as I'm like possessing sligs like gluckens and farts I'll be fine <laughs> yeah yeah and I, th- I, I think that's I've pretty actually much never played it oh you're in for oh, a treat great. you're in for a fucking treat it's very good uh, the only thing is I really hope that once I've had this I because I actually felt that um, Exodus was a be- uh, better game yeah I, I agree with that actually yeah, when it, when it came really down to Exodus. a while like, um, but at the same time I really want I really hope that once we put into this, like if they make enough money, that they'll do Exodus in the same, like the same justice that they're gonna do. Yeah, I was actually surprised that, <coughs> that they weren't doing it with with both of them at the same time. I thought that considering that they are the same story, that they would be attempting to create a kind of proper cohesive narrative between the two. Exactly, yeah. but I suppose yeah. that the the amount of work they put on it, the fact that they they are treating it like a, I mean. Not not quite AAA, but the the kind of um, upgrade in the graphics, the three D rendering stuff that's going on, the additional content. I I think it's probably taken them a lot of time and effort. Yeah, I mean, and they're uh, not short games either. Yeah, so. and Exodus as well um, was one of those rare sequels that you get that doesn't just kind of give you more. It changes the way you play it. Like you had in the first game you, when you're like trying to call mudokens around they've got eyes they can see in the in the second game their eyes are si- stitched together so you have to tell them oh, when to yeah. stop like it's like oh, a lemmings so thing it's, it's yeah, yeah. yeah yeah like and you're kind of trying to like tell them to stop and you're trying to tell them to go and they can't see and like they really built on top of the mechanics which is something mm-hmm. that the best games oh do. yeah the new improved chunks meat chunks yeah it was one of their um, reasons for redoing it is they wanted improved meat chunks <laughs> Accidentally send that Mudokin into a blazing hell. <laughs> Blades. <laughs> and that, that's the thing. I find that when sequels build upon their mechanics, they're exponentially better. Like uh, Those ones that just say, oh, we just want more. More of the game that we're making. Like, you know, mm-hmm. forget that. But if, some, if people yeah, are willing no, to get no into really wants... it and go, oh, what would make this weird within the universe that we have no, really no one really wants Borderlands the pre-sequel do they I mean like more That's Borderlands true. on the moon doesn't sound that interesting uh, yeah but... I, I, I think you may be proved wrong because Borderlands <laughs> is an exponentially fucking ridiculously popular franchise <laughs> And I think people will buy it. Yeah. I mean, the fact that it's well, not we'll written see if by they bu- Gearbox... We'll like... see if they buy that or Destiny, I suppose. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess. I guess. Yeah. Although, if there was, like, a Borderlands 3 that was coming out that was, like, 
written by the people that I like that are in Gearbox, so I would probably pick that over Destiny. Mm-hmm. Pre sequel oh. is written by the same writers. Oh, is it? It doesn't have. Yeah, um, it's just. Oh, what's his name? Who's, who's the guy that writes? Anthony Birch. Yeah, it, it's not really yeah, it, Anthony Birch. He is, is it? on it. Is oh, really? He? Yeah, oh, I'm pretty sure he is. Yeah. Sick. Oh hell. Oh right, yeah, maybe it's gonna. It's probably gonna be wicked. And, you know. <laughs> I guess. I guess Destiny is destined to flop. Take back all you said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This like this like core conglomerate of people on the internet who like Anthony Birch because he did Hey Ash, what you play, and like are gonna be yeah, yeah. like all over that shit. I think Destiny will blow it out of water. <laughs> Just right. I made Halo on the box is going to definitely sell copies of fucking Destiny. Yeah, I mean, you're essentially, it's like printing money when you put from the creators of Halo and Call of Duty on the box. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, they can probably get away with a lot. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. All right, Um, is that is that the news wrapped up then? Yeah, yeah, the only cool. bits I had. Well, then uh, I guess we'll take another break and we'll come back for a little bit more discussion of some weirder topics after this. That makes me just that think was, of the tick. Does it? The tick. That was his battle cry. Spoon it! Alright, we're back again, and I've been given the arduous task of presenting this next segment, which is about topics of interest, or things we want to talk about. And Daniel, you have something you want to bring up? Yeah, okay. So, while playing Infamous Second Son, you go in a round, and then for some reason you find a dead body... And this starts a little side quest, and there's this, you see this weird figure, and then you end up taking some photos and picking up a wallet. And then the game tells you, go to this point and stand on this thing. And you upload your your pictures and the wallet to an online profile. And then you can then go online and look through all this stuff and piece together clues to figure out who the murderer is. Hold on a sec, do you mean, do you mean online as in outside of the game, or there's... Yeah, on, on your laptop, you sign into a different thing, and then you can... What? <laughs> then you can view all these different parts and then figure out parts of the mystery, and then after you've done that, you can go back into the game and play the next part of this side quest. And this side quest is, like, a few hours long, and it takes a lot of, like you know, weird sort of puzzle solving, like you're logging onto like fake websites, using like fake email addresses and things and answering like, oh, I forgot my password questions or like logging into a secure server and putting in different codes. And it's all this like really quite in-depth sort of problem solving things in order to progress in this side quest. And it is one of the best side quests I've ever done. Really, really satisfying. And That's really cool. I was just wondering if anyone else had any other really cool examples of, like, what would be called, like... It's an ARG, isn't it? Is that, yeah. like, but, alternate reality game? Yeah. So, yeah. like, if anyone had... I mean, like, System Shock 2 immediately springs to mind. Like, the... Like, obviously, that's a really old game, right? But mm. Shodan definitely emails you. The main like antagonist of that game. That was the only way that people would communicate over the internet back then as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> so it's like Shodan's like, yo, this did, is what's Wait, going did on, you actually huh? play System Shock? Yeah, I've had a go. Oh System. man, no, I've never even like it's before I knew that PC gaming was even happening. Really, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me a little bit of like Metal Gear Solid when you can only progress for the rest of the thing by. Uh, well, there was a password on the actual physical box of the game or something. Oh, oh like, yeah. Metal like Metal Gear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that uh, was yeah. great. Mm. Uh, it really, really was a really good way of like hurting piracy of that game. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But then it's also rage-inducing when you've rented the game from a video store. <laughs> <laughs> and they give you the crappy box. It's- <laughs> yeah, what what do they do with all the nice boxes at uh, blockbusters for for the games? Like, where where they, are they hiding they, them all? They home. take them out back and then they they shoot all them. Over them. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. Unfortunately, them. they they probably bin them. <laughs> yeah, sons of bitches. But 
I know, like the whole the whole kind of semi reality oddness that goes on in games. The only the only thing that I've experienced like that has been in really recent times, and and that was a a beautiful part of of the Last of Us DLC that I kind of don't want to spoil for anybody <laughs> that might not play it. That that kind of makes makes that jump and in a way that is as all of that game is particularly emotionally mm. affecting, but like in a kind of um memories of the experience kind of way um and but yeah like i said i don't just, i don't want to spoil it so you actually just reminded me of another bit mm-hmm. in the last of us dlc that you know because there's part of the last of us dlc that takes takes place in a dilapidated mall? uh sort of mall yeah mm-hmm. and there are certain shops there mm-hmm. and the posters for the shops that are still on the walls have twitter feeds on them they and do. You can go. To, you can go to the Twitter accounts, and they they have like an account of the shops in the apocalypse. So it's like, oh, we've got like loads of water in. If people want to come buy water, <laughs> and it's like, okay, we're having to close. We're leaving, and all this stuff. That's fucked up. But that's really amazing. I think that that's really good for immersion. I, I think there's just... about three of them, like three shops with Twitter feeds. See, you say you DLC. say that's good for immersion, and I. Well, like, immersion, but outside immersion. Yeah, but it, but that <laughs> but the the framing that thing in the real world to have a a virtual shop that is represented in the real world in the time mm-hmm. of the things that's happening that that you're that obviously isn't happening here. I it kind of yeah. throws me out. I don't like, know, I think what would be excellent? What would be a really good idea is if those those shops didn't have the kind of like oh we're flooding we're getting out of here, we're closing down kind of thing. Mm. But they just had normal tweets. And then in order to say if they wanted to promote a new game, they could <laughs> start faking the outbreak through through extra yeah, yeah. tweets. That'd be, that'd, be, that'd be quite awesome. That'd be they absolutely do have, brilliant. They do have like some <laughs> tweets from before. Like They've done it in such a way that you can read through them from like before the... Like before things go wrong, through the whole mm-hmm. uh, so catastrophe. So it's like, time yo, where... we've got new jackets in. Yo, now it's the apocalypse, and we <laughs> are a safe house. If you want to take us up on yeah, that, yeah, it's like, oh, we're out, PS we're out of stock of, out. of like bandages. <laughs> like we've run out of bandages. Yeah. Just to let you know, mm-hmm. things like that. That's pretty cool. I quite like mm. that. I mean, it, like for me, because I mean, it's but at the same time, because obviously when you're playing the game. That's not what's going on, right? So it's like, if you want to take it further, you're archiving the game's own lure because that's mm. stuff mm-hmm. that's not presently happening when you're playing the game. That's stuff that like has happened as you using the tools that you have at your disposal to be able to explore its own lure further, it's kind of, which I think is quite good. It's yeah. kind of more interesting than just reading the, yeah, the, you're, looking at the you're looking at the yeah. ghost, you're looking so at the ghost seen... of the tweets, right? Rather than like a continuing thing. The yeah. echo mm-hmm. as such, yeah. 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 I think it's it had really something clever. like that in sorry in Alan Wake with the um, QR codes as a way if you interact with the game outside. Q- the... QR codes, Alan Wake. I know not. <gasps> oh well, there's just random QR codes in the game which you can um, uh, uh, check scan on your phone mm-hmm. and then it will take you to a website or um, images or posters or something. Um, some of them are thing of promoting a game or promoting the artists that do the music. For the game a well. couple of them That's are cool. like uh, promoting in-game things as well though because isn't there a couple yeah. of that promote like night springs tv show and stuff like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. all <laughs> things like that and that's I, I like i like that when you if there's something in a game you can um take and interact with outside of the game environment yeah. it's quite nice for the yeah. uh, for the infamous example like what it really made me think is like you could make a really substantial game like a detective game or something and this could yeah. be the primary way to play it oh that'd be brilliant actually yeah, and no, I mean the I, well. See, playing Dark Souls, a, a large part of playing Dark Souls is doing your research. Um, <laughs> I, I I know I know that it is like strictly. It's quite possible to do it just sitting down and playing the game on your own. But there's something quite enjoyable about trying to decipher weird kind of the hieroglyphics in the world or something and like weird bits of badly written stats and going and hunting through forums for for the actual information and actually (laughs) designing a game so that that not only is that a, a 
possibly necessary part of it, but that you're guided in that direction to deal mm. with it. That I mean, it's kind of it's kind of a useful skill to have for life. So like, if you can get good <laughs> at doing it in a video game, then like you could have fun whilst you're doing it in a video game, and then be able to apply yeah. it to actual weird situations yeah, in the rest uh, of your life. At the same time, like uh, the interesting part of it is game FAQs was the forum for that forever back in the day. Of course, like, and. That was really, really good. Like going on there and being like, "Oh, I don't know what this means. Or I don't know what, um, how, why this boss in Final Fantasy is not affected by any of the things I do to it." <laughs> you go on there and they'd have that information, and like you're sitting there in the '90s, and that, but that was the only way you could get it. Like now, I find with the major websites all doing compendium guides, I find it. I don't know. It's like less cool. It's too easy to complete. Yeah, because it was always on these really <laughs> weird, like text-driven, like massive articles that people would. There's probably and like a. It felt more like research. There's probably like a a really clever way to make a game so that you can't just like feed off of a guide to work your way through. Game FAQs the game. Game FAQs the game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go on game FAQs. And well, that's and... actually interesting with Infamous as well. Like some of the numbers that you get, some of the codes that you need in order to progress are random. So you oh, can't okay. just go on a guide and like. Oh, they, read they them did up. that. They did that in. A, so you um, have to like log on to you the have internet to... and it sync with your version of the game to be able yeah, to yeah, progress. Yeah. They oh. did that in Dishonored as well. It was quite nice with like some of the safe codes that you that you'd find. Um, they would they would be randomly generated. Well, not completely randomly generated. They'd be one of of several different numbers. So yeah. that yeah, if you were if you really couldn't be asked, you could jump on the internet and just go through all of them one by one but if you actually want to really be able to progress and feel like you've achieved anything then you actually have to go and find the number yourself yeah. <laughs> also like terminal Wherever hacking and fallout it was always random so you can just can just hack a terminal by asking someone online mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah so there's definitely ways of designing around it but um mm-hmm. no I mean, having played this on it again recently like even in the opening areas there'd be points where i go to a safe and I pick up a letter and it says whiskey and I'd be like, I'd be like what? what's going on what, what, whiskey what does that mean and I'd see on the wall that there was a bookshelf with bottles of whiskey on it I'd take the whiskey bottles off of it and then etched on to behind the whiskey would be the code that I needed just a little bit clever yeah, yeah. And, you, and you just sit there and go oh you fucking what, or beast. reading in somebody's diary <laughs> bringing that in <laughs> reading in somebody's diary that like there is a specific date that's important to yeah, them yeah and then and, and not over and like, saying nowhere like, that is this is my birthday use. yeah and then you go to the safe and you enter the owner's birthday and then it opens mm-hmm. and you just sit there going I didn't need a guide I used the world yeah. it makes you smart it makes you feel smart yeah. and more like you've achieved something it's also quite empowering you know because you yeah. feel like you've seen your way through the puzzle mm-hmm. yeah oh, it's really good it's difficult. I think it's quite difficult. More for, games should do it. It's difficult for the game designers to pitch that right, though. I mean, unless unless that is the mechanic of your game, unless what you're set, uh, going out to do is um, put puzzles in people's way that they have to think their way through, then if you are making something inaccessible to people that don't want to necessarily engage, like on on a mental level as much as that, with, with what well, they're really the designed for. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, but, I, I but, agree. But, but but like, but that's what I mean. If if the game's yeah. if the game is about that, then it isn't for them. But if the game mm-hmm. is essentially about something else, and then you put that in the way of progression. Oh yeah, so like if it's yeah. like an FPS shooter and it's got these random puzzles, yeah. <laughs> you just yeah, annoyed yeah, at and angry. And I, I think they, I think they did that fantastically. Though uh, being a first-person shooter, they, they shoot always had loads of different options that. for getting around things. Though, yeah, which yeah, is great. Like, yeah, really, really, really yeah. good. But um, at the same time, like I mean, like Dishonored's a first-person adventure game. It's like, but this is just but, but holding Dishonored, off. In Dishonored, those things were optional. That's how yeah, they dealt just, with that. Yeah, it's holding off the options of more stuff. So it's, uh, you, you, you sort of get into this position where you're like, oh, I can't be fucked mm-hmm. to figure yeah. out this passcode. I'm just going to get on with the game, which is never a situation that I find myself oh, in. Good, I yeah. find myself in being like, okay, I will spend the next hour of my life walking around this room <laughs> with no enemies in it, trying to figure out what the hell is going on. But um, I mean, imagining I, your avatar literally play, scratching been, their head. I mean, like, I've been playing video games since Tomb Raider. I remember falling asleep playing Tomb Raider and then having the answers to puzzles come to me in that <gasps> between sleep. I, 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 just being, I have that. I had that. No, <laughs> I don't yeah. know what I mean. That I mean, just having a bit of a nap, and then you're like, and you're, I know now. Suddenly, it, it clicks, and yeah, you know boom. where to go. I, to I love, I love my subconscious. It solves so many problems yeah. for me without actually having to be involved. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I found that on our on our degree, by the way, Dan, quite a lot. Um, 
But hey, okay. Um, so what was the what was the other thing that we had to chat about topics wise? You you had uh, Joe, Joe had another yeah topic. something Joe. Okay, so I want to know what everyone's vibe is with pre orders. Which okay, <laughs> basically mine falls down to this, right? I I love a good pre order if it comes with a hat. <laughs> because I, I collect video game hats um i put them on a cuddly head crab which I is have. also a hat yeah, yeah who is also a hat <laughs> called um called gregory um from half-life 2 and i enjoy modeling them on him yet as we propel ourselves further and further and further into the capitalism universe that is video games i find myself hating myself a little bit about it I want to, because I don't, I, I think pre-order culture is, it, like, broken on so many levels. Well, it's like, it's yeah. something that, that the publishers want so hard, because showing that they are going to have those sales numbers so that they can they can manage to distribute their game successfully to all of, like, the brick-and-mortar retailers is, is key for them. So, they, yeah. so they're trying to convince us that we're idiots if we don't do it. But personally, I think... I think that there are very few circumstances where paying for something before it's out actually makes any sense. Like, I mean, especially considering the, the video games, there's there's all of that possibility of them being good or bad in any circumstance. Like, say outright saying or, or putting an actual serious quantity of money down for them before you've even heard whether they're necessarily good or not seems pretty foolish. So I try and avoid it. I guess is what I'm saying, um, but but then there's all of these like extra incentives that they're throwing at us these days, yeah. like evolved having a monster in. Considering that evolve is a um, like versus cooperative fight a monster who's being played by another player as one of a series of hunters in a squad of four game, that there is a whole monster in it that you can't get unless you pre-order it. Yeah. I mean, I, that I don't know what bad. to do. I don't know what to do because I'm morally opposed to it. But yeah, you it's, a, it's a large chunk of the game. Yeah, like I get that. Well, yeah, there's only there's only three monsters in the game. Is so that, it's it, like whole thirty percent. So more. it's actually yeah. it's it is the third monster, isn't it? You get a fourth one if you pre-order it. No, you get a fourth if you pre-order. I think. Oh, okay. So it's an additional thirty three percent rather than yeah yeah thirty three percent that you lose. Yeah, yeah yeah yeah. But yeah, I don't like that one at all. In general, like if if a game looks really good, I'll pre-order it. Like, and this it, is yeah. and that's regardless of whether the the incentives are there. But why? And I think, and I think, I think incentives are best when they are nothing to do with the game. Like, yeah, I was they, gonna make that point. Yeah, that if, if there's if it's no in-game content, then I think that's when it's best. Like, I love getting like art books and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I got like the ridiculously massive. Metal Gear Solid HD collection, and it came with a really like, like an A4 sized hardback art book, and I is think that, that's awesome. But in the Metal Gear Solid HD collection, was that a pre order bonus, or was that just something that was part of of like knowing oh, okay, that the people yeah, that were going to pay for it loved it that much? Okay, yeah, true. Because that then, that so, extra so, incentive. For example, Dark Dark Souls is another example. Like when I pre ordered Dark Souls, you got it upgraded to this special edition. Yeah, and then that had an art book in it. Yeah, and then that had a the soundtrack. Yeah, the soundtrack. The soundtracks always get me. Um, yeah. I always love a good video game soundtrack, so I always find myself like hocking out, especially if it's by someone that I know I like the work of. I mean, one of the reasons I got uh, the special edition Beyond Two Souls is because the guy that did the soundtrack for Assassin's Creed Three, which I think is the best soundtrack for Assassin's Creed, um, mm -hmm. like was doing the music for it. So, so, so like that kind of fan service for the people that are, that like really love it that much like i think is great but mm. at the same time it still feels like you're sl being sl slightly held to ransom if you can only get there if you pre-order it um we were talking before about um odd world new and tasty if you if you buy that within the first two weeks of it um, coming out then you end up getting a, a bunch of additional content in the game and that yeah. seems like a far more reasonable way of dealing with it to me than saying that you have to have bought it before it's come out otherwise you don't get this stuff yeah that's al that's also going to force a lot more sales um, within the first two weeks mm -hmm. of the game which are the I most think... important two weeks of a video mm -hmm. game's lifespan yeah I whereas think the content... I think pre-ordering it drips and drabs like if you pre-order a game you, like if within there's like a three month I don't know two three month gap of pre-ordering so it it's, makes more sense to them to give the incentives the first two weeks rather than mm. I don't know yeah, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I I'm... think I think mm-hmm. if they are offering content, like for example, like Alien Isolation is offering like the the original Alien content, which I would say right more. now is actually <laughs> iconic rather than Ubisoft's yeah. way of flippantly using the word. Like they should definitely use iconic cast members in their advertising rather than the point. iconic hat. The, the of... iconic hat. Of, uh, of the, uh, Aiden Pierce's Aiden iconic Pierce. hat, which isn't iconic, which is obviously, just a baseball because cap. it's a baseball cap that we don't know about <laughs> until the fucking video game comes out. Yeah, yeah, but like, I think as long, I think the content needs to be available after launch, like, because one of the examples I can think of, like, if you pre-ordered Red Dead, you got the War Horse, which is like this super strong horse, and it had really good stamina. Well, actually, that's another thing that right there. So if you if you have a, a pre-order bonus that is better than the stuff that you'll have in the game normally then you yeah, have this yeah, whole weird balancing issue and sometimes mm-hmm. that that can actually make the the gameplay experience less enjoyable for people that have yeah. pre-ordered it yeah. so yeah um, I remember, especially when it's multiplayer involved uh, well, I, oh, remember, God, yeah. I remember with deus ex um pre-ordering that and getting the option to have different guns at the start they give you a choice between a few different bonus guns that you can they get. actually did it I well, found that I, I kind of stood there and went, I'm not going to take this ridiculous sniper stealth rifle that I'm not actually meant to have because it's going to break the game. The double barrel shotgun is yeah. beautiful though. Yeah. yeah, so I took the double <laughs> barrel, barrel shotgun instead. But um, I, yeah. um, I had the same thing with uh, with the uh, Dark Souls 2 recently. Like it, I pre-ordered that and it was like, oh, it comes with a bunch of weapons. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> throw them away I got the soundtrack with it that's yeah you're I not you're not really in. I mean yeah. like the Dark, soundtrack's Dark really good for Dark Souls 2 as well Dark Souls is yeah. all about like pitting your metal against whatever the game has to offer if yeah, you're exactly. being offered better to tools in the get go then you're just not really yeah. a man the uh, special <laughs> edition for Dark Souls 2 was that little bit more expensive than I would have liked um, considering the prices on the previous two entries in that series. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, if we class Demon Souls as an entry in that series. Also, they changed the way the box was. So I wanted Dark Souls, uh, Demon Souls, Dark Souls, and Dark Souls 2 in the same boxes. And always breaking out of your flow of pre order box always makes me go, that's not going to sit on the shelf of them. <laughs> it's not going to give me the view that I want, which is to sit there and go, oh, look at them all lined up. Says the man who's been kind of vaguely moaning about capitalism this whole podcast. What he really wants <laughs> is <laughs> more things to, match. to yeah. stare I, at. I, 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 Capitalism, <laughs> as a man that lives in a capitalist society, I cannot but live with hypocrisy, right? <laughs> Every day my breath is hypocrisy. I go out, I buy a Coke, it's hypocrisy. And I can't deal with that <laughs> on any level. Like, But at the same time, I'd like it if my Dark Souls box is fucking matched. <laughs> Namco Bandai, if you're listening. Well, is it Bandai Nam- Namco Bandai or Nam- Bandai Namco? Namco <laughs> Bandai, they it? know who they are. <laughs> are we sure anymore? <laughs> No, well, I, when you put it like that, Jay, you're still an idiot. <laughs> well, given, <laughs> given, given. I, I mean, I just said that I collect video game special editions so I can get special fucking hats. I have one that's a magic cop, one that's like Sonic's cop. spines, <laughs> one that's I've got Parappa the Rapper's fucking hat, bro. <laughs> one of these is gonna become like the the thumbnail for the episode. Yeah, but we should put maybe different, all we should of put them different should be hats on the Gregory episodes. and then like, make them <laughs> little little gifts for the fucking show. It'll be fun. I like that. Cool. But yeah, <laughs> okay. So that's that's pre-orders. Like I think I think I've said my piece. How about the rest of you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, no, I'm I'm, much cool. I'm good. Although I do feel like I hate them, even though I buy them. Yeah, yeah. As long as, I, as long I agree. As got I, I hate I hate when they give substantial content away, like Evolve. That seems ridiculous. Yeah. yeah I actually I actually feel really bad that um, th- you know when certain consoles get an hours more content. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. Even, even when it's I the one that you really, own, I think that's it's, really dark. It's yeah. Itchy. I mean, I own a PS4 and I got the extra hour for Watch Dogs, and I sat there thinking, oh, Xbox One guys, it's pretty bomb for them. Mm. This is just the companies themselves, like Microsoft and Sony, put, yeah, putting Ubisoft money in are to really exclude on someone. Giving PlayStation an hour's extra content as well. Since Assassin's Creed 3, they've just been, yeah. like, oh, I have an extra hour. I yeah, they they, they give extra hours for every every game they do. Yeah. Every game they do has an extra hour onto it. But I'm pretty sure Xbox has one now. Like one of Ubisoft titles has an extra hour on an Xbox. I think now. 
it, it, isn't there one of the new ones? I don't I know which remember. game. I don't know which game it is, but I think it's got an extra hour on both consoles, and it's just a different hour that you get depending on which one you play. Oh, well. Jesus Christ! <laughs> well, Metal Gear, well, Metal Gear Ground Zeroes did that, didn't it? Oh, it was like, yeah. oh, exclusive mission on PlayStation, and then a week later, it's like, oh, and a different Xbox. exclusive mission on Xbox. Except, <laughs> except at the same time, everyone wanted Deja Vu, and nobody <laughs> wanted Raiden's yeah. Misadventures on the Island. Yeah. yeah. I don't understand why they do that because surely the only reason for doing that would be like, oh, we want to make people buy a different console so they can buy the same game and play the different exclusive hour mm. on a different console. I, I, that's why I don't like console exclusivity. That has always bugged oh, me. Man, I, and I, don't I mean, I, I hate it entirely. Like, in my ideal yeah. world, I would just have a good PC and I'd be able to play everything. Like, All the time. But... And ported, but not terribly. Indeed. <laughs> would be p- ideal. Indeed. But as is um, Naughty Dog main games on, on PlayStation consoles, so I have to have one. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> that, that is literally my reason for owning a PS4. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Um, cool. I think, uh, I think we're done then, yeah? I think so. Yeah. Cool, let's wrap this one up then. It has been emotional, guys. It's been really nice having you on, um, Liz, um, as well as thank the, you, thank the you old regular crew. Good addition. It'd be yeah. brilliant <laughs> if you can make it back sometime. We need Definitely. to have some kind of like representative of the opposite sex on here because, by God, we're all a bunch of horrible sweaty men. And boobs. <laughs> and boobs. Because people really like to hear those breasts. Yeah, even they though Ubisoft refused to render them. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Bye. All right. So yeah, it's been good, guys. Um, we will catch you all ne- on our next episode of Taste My Game Face with any luck, which we should be recording next week if everything goes according to plan. Sweet. Ooh. Bye. Oh. Bye. Bye. Here okay. are some topics. That or you could introduce it as Tales of Interest. Tales of Interest. Don't put that in. Or Don't r- you random that BS in. that we want to talk about at the end of the podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Either of those would right. be. Let me know when to go. Whenever you you want. Okay. Before Cal gets home, I'll get mad. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm probably uh, going to put that in the podcast, by the way. <laughs> <laughs>